Vincent Foresters, <laughs> welcome <laughs> to the podcast <laughs> episode, I believe, number 15, and we're in yet another remote location with another guest, Mrs. No, Miss, sorry, what? Miss <laughs> Maggie Leo. Hello. So this is my soon-to-be sister-in-law, who is not a hunter or a fisherwoman. I'm not. But that's kind of why she's here, but I'll explain that in a minute. So, uh, before we start, here is... Your episode, your episode, your verse of the episode. Colossians, chapter 4, verse 6. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt. That's kind of cool. So that you may know how you ought to answer each person. Amen. There you go. Colossians 4, 6, verse of the episode. Okay, so I'm in Cape Cod. I'm in Sandwich, Massachusetts, visiting with Dana's family. And Maggie is Dana's sister, her favorite sister, only True. sister, younger yeah. sister. And um, so Maggie is on here today, one, because she's very interesting and cool, two, Thank because you. she knows nothing about bass fishing. Is that fair to say? It's very fair to say. Mm -hmm. Absolutely nothing. And she's going to ask questions <laughs> that people who know nothing about bass fishing would ask people that fish for bass. Mm -hmm. uh, but before that, do you want to give us like a rundown on your athletic career, <laughs> your history, and what you do. Not because hockey's not the only thing you do. True. Well, I know, sadly, it's not even like, don't even do that anymore. But, so, where we're sitting right now, you can't see it, but there is a shrine that we'll looks like pictures. I've passed away. Um, my father has put up <laughs> of all my awards and athletic achievements. Um, Dana's on here, too, a couple times, you know, rec soccer here and there. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, it's something that's always been a part of my life. Um, I played field hockey, uh, lacrosse, and ice hockey growing up. Um, yes, this is... Maggie Leo, Athlete of the Year. <laughs> this is one of those. Um, but I played ice hockey in college, um, D Division Three. Um, it was a great time, the love of my life. Played since I was four. It was a passion of mine. So now, um, you know, try to play in a beer league once in a while, <laughs> uh, but with Corona, it's been pretty limited. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it about me for my athletic ability. And then I am a nurse uh, at a psych facility. I love it, passionate about it. Um, and I just finished my master's in nurse practitioner, so I'll be studying for my boards, and I'll take that hopefully in the fall. Um, and then, yeah. So, cool. and now I'm here to uh, ask Sam about some bass fishing questions. He's going to hate me after this, but we are, uh, we're going to get close. No, it'll be fun. Uh -huh. Yeah, it'll mm -hmm. be fun. <laughs> so, I've done, we'll, we'll do the Q&A. Okay. And then uh, she can bail. I'll just, like, recap Alaska really quick, because the last time, it's been a while since we've done a podcast, um, July 3rd, but we, I, like, literally life has not stopped in a good way, mm. an adventurous way. So, that was, that was Alaska last time you heard from the podcast. We did a rafting trip. I was in Alaska, flew home, was there for two days, and then we left at three in the morning to drive up here. So I've done some fishing up here in Cape Cod. I actually caught like the biggest striper I've ever seen or heard of in my life um, a couple days ago, but we're going to save that for a whole other episode because we've got plenty. Because those two days that I was at home, ran to the lease and did like a trail camera check, checked the food plots. We'll talk about that a little bit. And then, but yeah. So, questions. You want to just okay. kick it off? Yeah, I've not seen, I tried to, to look it? at the questions earlier. And I, she wouldn't let me. So uh -uh. This, this will all be a surprise. So, okay, fire away. Yeah, just an overview. I fished maybe like once or twice. My mom and I tried to find the picture. I was like three, and I wasn't scared of it though. I think it's pretty interesting. Yeah, all because right. she's scared of everything else. Very true. Spiders, bugs, butterflies. That's that's for another day. Probably ants. <laughs> all right. Um. So. Is there actual skill? Oh. No, I'm very curious. Like, what makes you better than everyone else with fishing? Like, what makes you good? Is there skill? Don't you hate that question? <laughs> Just Is joking. there skill? <laughs> no, no, no. So, I yes. No, no. no. There, yeah. I mean, what's the skill? There, but that's probably, honestly, that's probably, like, the number one question from people that don't fish. Yeah. Is that, isn't it all just luck anyways? It definitely isn't. There definitely yeah, has to no, be some, yeah. like, some form of, like, strategy. Yeah, because, I mean, if it was luck, you wouldn't have Jacob Wheeler. You, you don't know who that is. You wouldn't have, like, the Jacob Wheelers and the Kevin Van Dams that win every single tournament. Not right. every single tournament, but, like... I hear you. Anything that has, like, people consistently being successful over the same other people. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, it can't all be like... Ah, it's just... It's all about just understanding, like, 
the fish behavior at different times of the year, like okay. where they go and what they do. Well, and no, I figured I'd start something off like that because that's literally what everyone asked me. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, there has to be some strategy to it because yeah, why, Sam's really good at it. So how do you become good at it? Yeah, it's just so like I mean the number one thing is just like fishing a lot. Yeah, being on, but because that's how you figure out like okay, I know it's it's early March, it's been winter all winter long. They're gonna start. It's starting to warm up like. And just knowing where to look, like when they move shallow, when they go to spawns, when they lay mm -hmm. their eggs, and <laughs> when they lay okay. so when they go to spawn, it's just like no, where are you going to look along the way? It's summertime, like where do you like using the limited amount of time you have to like be as efficient as possible, and that just comes from like just knowing what fish do. Gotcha. And then you got to catch them. You got to find them, and then you got to catch them. Very true. And then you got yeah. That leads into my next question. Kay. How do you know what kind of bait to use? Like. Is there a difference, like with smallmouth bass, like yeah, there's a difference. Largemouth bass, like what's yeah, it's so, like smallmouth will eat big baits. Usually, people though are throwing smaller stuff for smallmouth because they do have a small mouth. Yeah, but and like, they don't grow <laughs> typically like as big as largemouth. But yeah, so typically smallmouth stuff is smaller because not be, just because a lot of places like up north, like up here and up. So yeah, I already said where we were. But her grandparents are the ones that are in Messina. We were supposed to go see. Oh, I don't think I've said this yet because I may not have known this the last time the podcast. I'm in Cape Cod instead of Messina because while I was in Alaska, Tennessee got on the no crap list or the all crap list all from crap. New York mm -hmm. saying that if you came to New York from anywhere in Tennessee, you had to quarantine for 14 days, regardless of if you just had a test done or not. Because I was like, oh, we'll just get a test. So that didn't matter. So we didn't go to Messina. We came to Cape Cod, which is fine. It worked out perfect. But, um, yeah, I mean, because a lot of the stuff they eat up there is smaller. Mm -hmm. It's just all about, like, matching what the fish are used to eating. Because, like, if a fish swims around all day and eats little bitty, like, little worms or gobies or small bait fish, mm -hmm. like, throwing something that's this big will work in some places, but it's probably not going to work where they're used to eating things that are that big. Gotcha. You know, I mean, so, like, Tennessee River, where I'm from, a lot of those river lakes down there, like, you can throw really big swim baits and big worms, big, like, because... A lot of the shad the fishery, like they might eat stuff that's that big. Like some of the stuff we were throwing for those stripers the other day, like I would bass fish with stuff that big sometimes. Oh, okay. You may not catch as many, but you're probably yeah. going to catch bigger ones, which is Gotcha. Fun. No, I was going to ask, do people actually use worms, or is that just from like mm -hmm. a show? You mean like live worms? Yeah. So like we can't use any live bait at all in the fishing tournaments. Why? Because it's real bait. You have to use fake mm. stuff. So they have to like really trick them. Okay. So you can't use minnows or even like dead minnows like if you just cut a minnow up and you can't do that either I don't okay okay moving on this is all artificial <laughs> uh, let's see so do fish actually feel when you hook them is um, that a thing? I've, you know we I've always about this heard last night. yeah because what was the, some show oh Yellowstone if you haven't watched Yellowstone Great you show. should totally watch Very Yellowstone good. but uh, yeah so I've always heard that they don't have the same like kind of nerve endings or they don't have nerve endings in their mouth to where like if you hook them it really doesn't hurt i don't really care if it does or not i mean mm. there's i mean i did i mean you would prefer it not but i mean sure um the there are times so if you do something wrong like i don't know gut hook them then yeah obviously like they're gonna feel it or hook them in the tongue they probably feel it when you hook them in the tongue but most of the time they don't Okay. Or <laughs> you can brain hook them and they don't feel anything, ah! which has only ever happened once in my life, which is actually Ew. a funny story. I was fishing with John Cox, the John Cox. I drew, they'll know who that is. He's like one of the best in the world. Okay, I wasn't even going yeah, to question it. It would be him. like saying I was fishing with, I was playing hockey with Pasternak. Okay, okay. Or gotcha. Chara, that which they probably don't know who Pasternak and Chara are either. But anyways, so I drew John Cox during, I think it was when... They were called Everstarts. Yeah, I drew him in an Everstart tournament on Gunnersville, and we caught him pretty good that day. He caught him decent, and this was before he was fishing out of the aluminum boats. This was when he still was running like a full size Ranger. But um, I hooked, yeah, I hooked one on a wacky worm, and I, I get the bite and I set the hook, and I'm like, there's nothing there. I mean, it just feels like you're reeling in a stick. It's like, I swear that was a bite, but I, it's just a stick. And I reeled in, and it's a little like 12 incher, and he's just Aww. skipping along the water. And I unhook him, throw him in, and he's just... Oh, you killed Like, him. what is that? And he, he said, you brain hooked him, dude. I was like, oh, shit. why did it just do it again? Okay, we figured out a problem. I was using the wrong browser. So, next squad probably won't even put that part in there. All right, fire away. 
Um, so since they don't feel pain, and say, like, you catch one, you've already put a hole in its mouth, and you say, well... Uh, try not to, I guess. Well, then I have to darn move. it! This is not the right size. I'm just going to throw it back. Yeah. But I've already harmed it. Why wouldn't you just keep it at that point? Are you not allowed to keep them? So some of them you can, some of them you can't. It depends on the size. So like every lake's different. So the way you figure out if you keep one or not is, so like if you're on Fort Loud and it's a 14 inch limit, which is like the lake closest to my house. Mm -hmm. So if you catch one that's 13, you can't keep it at all. So you throw them back if they're too short, just like the striper up here. Oh, like okay. there's certain okay. lengths that you can and can't keep. So there's, but then like if you're in a tournament, so most tournaments that's a five fish limit, most of them are three or five. So if I catch five, and say I've got five three-pounders, then if I catch one that's two pounds, like, it's a keeper. It's over 14 inches, but, like, it's not going to do me any good to keep it. So okay. even though I catch it and it's a keeper, I'm still going to throw it back because it doesn't gotcha. help me. That's culling. So, like, once you get your five, you try to, like, cull. C -U -L -L. Culling? Culling? Culling. <laughs> culling. The, boy, the accents are very different it's, between the two states. I'm getting used to it. Yeah, I am too. Okay. But yeah, so do I have an accent? And most of the time, uh, not really. Okay. I think out of all of you, your dad has the biggest accent. Mm, New York. Yeah, but most of the time though, like, if you hook one, sometimes this isn't the case. But a lot of times, like, you can hook one and pop the hook out, and like, it would be hard to even see where the hole was where you hooked it. Like, gotcha. it's a really small. Like, mm. it's not like they're gonna eat a minnow and the minnow's gonna swim out the side of their face, and it heals up true. pretty quick. True, true, true. Because I mean. That's a big thing is just like conservation and trying to keep as many fish alive as you can. True. Used to, so like when you cull it, you'll put a tag on it mm -hmm. to where like when you're, when you open your live well, there's not just five fish in there and you don't know which is which. It's like you'll put tags, little numbers, like it's the first, second, third one I caught. And so you can switch them out really easy and it's oh, a little bit faster so you don't have to pull all okay. your fish out of the water and check them on. But see. they used to have it where you would just stick a pin, stick like a little prong through the bottom of their lip and just make another hole and that one could get kind of big when they're pulling around and like you got the whole weight of it on so now they've made it to where those are pretty much illegal everywhere like in all the tournaments gotcha not illegal from like a state perspective but right. all the tournaments so now they have them where it's just it's almost like uh the clips that cheap the kit the clips that keep the chips fresh that'd be hard that the clips good, that's... that keep the chips fresh and it just like you sat down and it just holds them it doesn't actually put a hole in them okay but for the stripers, so yeah. you have to you have to throw back the ones that are the smallest ones for small bass, right? The smaller ones that are be you said below or yeah. So that's kind of that's not very common. But for stripers, yeah. you have to you can't take the that forty seven inch ones. ones, right? Right. Why? So that's called a slot limit, which slot limits are weird. Most of the time, you don't like the big tournaments don't typically go to slot limit lakes because if you catch a big one, okay, then you can't keep it and that sucks. So a slot limit, it works one of two ways. So like the striper here, the slot limit is 28 to 34 if you're recreational. Commercial guys, it's different. So you can only keep them if they're in that window. Okay. And then some places it's a slot limit where you can't keep them if they're in that window. Like there was a lake where I went to school at that I, don't, I think it was like, maybe it was 18 to 21 or surely it wasn't 15 to 21. I think it was 18 to 21, you couldn't keep them. So you had to catch an over that's what it's called. If you catch one that's over that slot limit, then that's awesome. Okay. That's just called catching an over. But yeah, that's why the striper were like that. And it's just oh. to preserve a certain size of fish. Like you don't want to keep the small ones, you don't want to keep the big ones, but you can keep this range in the middle. Mm -hmm. Or vice versa. Like you want to let those middle range fish grow and get to the over size. So you protect that middle range, that middle class fish, and let them get big. Most of the time bass fishing, if there's a slot limit, you can't keep them in the slot. But here with a striper, it's different. You can only keep them in the slot. Okay. Which is weird. I, most of the time, slot limits are just frustrating. It, yeah, They're I annoying. was frustrated for you when I saw that picture. He was holding this big 47 inch striper. It was and huge. he's like, I actually brought home big. this like little one. And I didn't understand, but now I do. Yeah. Great. There you go. Thank you. We're solving um, questions. The world let's problems. See. Probably the world's problems. <laughs> <laughs> um. So now that you've gone striper fishing, yes. Are you gonna be like disappointed when you catch a smallmouth bass now? Is it less exciting? 
Mm, no, but I can totally see why. There's there's a lot of people that I know that have either done it or have said they would do it. They're like, if I live near the ocean, like I would not freshwater fish. Like I would right. solely saltwater fish, and I yeah. get it. Like I can see how that would be. Like I like the tournament. Okay. Mindset and atmosphere so much that like I could never totally switch over. Right. But I can see why people would, for sure. Yeah. Because it is. I mean. Jeff, when Jeff was talking, he's like, oh, I'd love to come down to Tennessee and, like, bass fish with you and, like, learn how to do that because they don't do it nearly as much up here. I'm thinking, yeah, but if you're used to catching 30 and 40 pound oh fish, God. like, if I get on a school of three pounders, like, I'm pretty jacked up. Like, I'm going to be excited. And you're like, oh, cool. Here's this 18-inch fish. Yeah. Awesome. I'm like, no, that, that's good. Yeah. But, like, people know, like, guys know that that's different, but I can see why. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. So no, I won't be disappointed to go. I'm actually dying to go back and bass fish. Like it's killing me. Really? Ever since the boat got fixed in, when I was in Alaska. Yeah. Like, and then I go home and I look at it and don't get a chance to go. And I'm like, mm. like borderline anxious to yeah. get them. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> get that little ticket. Like we gotta go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Makes sense. All right. Let's get into the important questions. Ooh. Mm -hmm. All right. So you know that thing that you wear on your neck? Um, some fishermen wear it. Now people wear it as masks. Oh, but. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah Is yeah. that just, like, is there a purpose to it? Or is it, like, oh, it's, like, fisherman's, like, swag. Like, if you have a cool one, you're like, hmm. It's for the sun. Okay. It's, like, to keep the sun off your face. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So some people wear a hood. Like, now, most of the time. A hood? I don't like it because it's tight. But, like, that NCO shirt I got. Yeah. Oh, shout out. North Chatham Outfitters. Just because it's a cool tackle shop up here mm. in Chatham, which is my favorite town that I've been to on the Cape. Sponsor him. Because Chatham's the coolest. But anyways, um, I almost wore my that shirt down here too, but I was like, then I would be like, North Chatham, North Chatham. <laughs> ah. Yeah. You'd <laughs> but have anyways, to move here, basically. I think yeah, I think you would have to. Mm -hmm. um, but what was so the you question? wear the hood? Yeah. So I like to wear the hood because I don't like the buff being around my neck. It gets hot. Okay. And so the hoods are nice. Cause it's like a long sleeve shirt with it. it's just to keep the sun off of you gotcha everybody has what they like and if you just wear a buff there's always this little band around your neck like there's always a little bitty gap between the top of your shirt collar and the bottom of the buff so you get a little like a little bitty crescent moon sunburn ah all the time. nice so you can still get some sun on your face they make some now afco makes some which is a cool brand uh, that is a hood and it like i don't know if it zips or if it's just here where it's like a big loose face shield that's like connected to the jacket, which is cool, or okay. the shirt. Oh. Yeah, it's just for sun. Do you ever put sunscreen on your face? Yes. Okay. That's Good. about the only place you have to put it. Good answer. Because I have to wear the gloves. So are there, so like for our hockey players, like when we're off the ice, right? Yeah. You have this certain swag that you uphold, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so I'll like, I, I'm gonna sound like an absolute mm, bad word, but I, I'll wear like Lululemon and people will be like, ah, that's she, a hockey thing? she plays hockey. Or really? like if a guy is wearing like all Lululemon and yeah. wearing like a backwards hat, I'm like, wow, yeah, you're a hockey that's guy. That's a hockey player? Absolutely. Really? Is there something that fishermen like down south, like since it's so <laughs> common, yeah. it's not common here. So like yeah. I'm not going to be like pointing out that guy and be like, wow, he, he's a bass fisherman. Like I know that that's yeah. happening. Is that a thing for you guys? Is that something that you guys like do? There's about, about 30 different things that you <laughs> could wear. <gasps> Like, Perfect. because everybody down there, it's fun. It's just like the the fishing mentality, I think, to where like you want to be out in public. It's probably the same thing. Like, I want to, when I go out in public today, a lot of people are like this. I try not to be like this, but uh -huh. just because that's what all my clothes are, like, I probably do come across this way. <laughs> but like, people be out in public and they're like, I want people to know that I fish all the time. <laughs> and so they're going to wear, they're going to wear a Columbia or, a PFG shirt and or hat. Mm -hmm. They've probably got a sun. Now, used to, this used to be bigger. The sunglass tan line mm. was a big thing. Okay. But now with the hoods and the buffs, I don't think you get as much of that. So you strive like you for still a sunglass do. tan line? That's yeah, like I remember in high school, I'm like, I've got to just wear sunglasses all the time to where I get the, the raccoon sunburn oh because so that people know I fish. Because I was like in that, I was sucked into all that, like, oh, you have to know that I'm a bass fisherman. So you've got the Columbia and the PFG stuff. The And I know a lot of people wear sunglasses with the cables. That's one. Hook shirts. The H-U-K. Mm, the hook. Hook. 
Okay. Huh. 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 I think that if you took two, it's a testosterone infused sport. Gosh. Especially well. the college fishing thing. Don't even get me started, college people. Oh boy. But you walk into the tackle shop or you see guys like at a tournament, they'll have their hook shirts on mm -hmm. and they'll have their glasses on, they'll have their hook hat or their Columbia hat or their PFG. And that's pretty much like they would just walk up. It's almost like two turkeys like strutting around each oh. other. Like, hook, hook. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like, y'all know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we we smoked them today. Oh god. Did you, yeah, good, good. Yeah, we're we're whacking them. Yeah. Why can't I picture this? Them. I can picture it. Yeah, it's all. You're wearing your shorts. They're probably too short. Mm. But that's not a bad thing. Like I like the shorts. That's the only like I'll wear pants sometimes. But you got the Patrick Walter short shorts on. Shout out to Patrick. He fished and caught. Patrick, I point like he's watching. Patrick's yeah, like not point watching. Over. He Patrick's not right doing here, this. Actually, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, Patrick. He's also he fishes the elites, and he was in college when I was in college. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. He's one of the guys that's already doing it. But yeah, you got the Patrick Walter shorts on, which is what I wear. But uh, yeah, you got the shorts. You got the what? I can't think of the name of the shirt. It's like the style shirt. This. I don't know. It's like the button down, like the sun shirts, but it's like a total button down. You know, it's like the lightweight. Is it loose? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like the PF uh, Columbia makes some. P I yeah, don't know. Yeah, you know, I know what you're talking about. All yeah. that stuff, or the hook, or any fishing brand really. Like you just kind of like rep the brands that you want, and everybody knows that they're fishing brands. Right. Pretty much. Okay. Or the free hats that you get at all the college tournaments. If you're a college Ooh. guy, you get a bunch of free stuff. Or girl. Or girl. College guy. Or When's girl. the last time you it. saw a girl on a college fishing team? So, Curious. The last time that I fishing in college they've all every a lot of them have them not really them. shout out females love yeah. that for you mm -hmm. yeah brian college has a few uh carson newman's got a few those are just the ones i know uh -huh. they're close bethel i think has a couple or used to uh -huh. yeah there's quite a few Great. oh yeah i remember yeah i talked to some of them at lake norman back a long time ago anyways yeah okay great awesome yeah. you just wear whatever you just wear no I mean, I mean, <laughs> that's what if if you, we're talking about like the all the Reiki junk, yeah. Stuff, oh my like, god! If you were, whole other side story. Oh. <laughs> if you were to like, what's the aura of a fishing outfit? It, it just yells, yeah. "I'm a bass fisherman." <laughs> you have uh, to know. <laughs> yeah, that's um, pretty much it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so. Hmm. Mm. Shout out Rain, the energy drink of the day. I'm just gonna keep plugging these in every video and podcast until one of them sends me like drinks and sponsors me. Rain Orange Dream Sickle, best rain flavor. Thank you, Rain. Okay, mm. you wanna try it? No. Okay. Maybe a little. I've never had one of these, so let me see. Coffee? Nope. Oh, it's, it's vodka. No, I'm kidding. It's coffee. Mmm. What's this supposed to do for you? It's you got 300 milligrams of caffeine. Oh. It will light a fire. Okay. Inside of you. Okay. All right, and then the last question. You're gonna probably hate me for this one. So, um, say you're like swippity swiping on a dating app, right? <laughs> Shout out to Bumble. That's where him and his fiance met. That's true. Um, don't knock it till you try it. Be swippity swiping, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. And then you come across a dude with a fish. Okay. Do you think that's gonna help you? Like, do you think that okay. that is gonna help you? So I had fish in mind, I'm sure I did. I had to have. But it was probably, my thought process was like, I don't want somebody to, if somebody's gonna see a fish and that would be a negative thing, then there's no, like, why would I wanna talk to that person anyways? Fair enough. But right. what is it with an ugly fish? It has to be What's a nice looking fish. No, it has to be like a nice looking oh, fish. Oh, well, I see. Now, right? here's the thing. So, because my fish picture, let's see if I can find it. I know this is the one I had on there. Was John and I, one of my buddies that I fished with in college. It was us at a tournament. <laughs> so, you're like wearing your Tennessee Tech stuff. Shout out Golden Eagles. Wings up. Actually, whatever. Um, I'm not going to be able to find it quick enough. Anyways. Okay. So, like, you're on stage. They're, they're, they're all small mouths. It's pretty fish. You got uh -huh. your, It's a, it was very colorful. Nice. It's actually probably points for colorful points, points for it not being like disgusting and globby looking. Yeah, because if you'd had like a like a ten pound catfish that you'd drug through the mud, getting it up on the bank, so probably wouldn't have used that one. Negative points. I think this is like the first picture on my camera. Yeah, it was. Oh, it's like that. See, you got a lot of colors. Oh my god. Blue, yellow, purple, white. All the fish are are healthy. Light. See, that's a prime. 
if you're looking for a good fish picture for your for dating profiles that might be the one if you're watching it on YouTube something like that you got a lot of pictures both up you know you're smiling that's another okay another rant mini rant if you catch a fish smile it's if a it's a thing. big fish I hate that people will be like mm. Mm. <laughs> I caught this bass and I'm, Look. And I'm angry <laughs> <laughs> you caught like a 10 pounder, dude. Smile. Right. Hey, I don't know. That's Dana a, definitely showed me that picture, by the way. I, she sent this to me. She's like, What do you think about this? I'm like, Well, he has two fish in his hand. What do you think about it? And he's like, Well, I'm not really focused on the fish. I'm focused on the face. Right. So that's good. That's when I good, had, didn't good have decision. long hair. Yeah. So you got, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't that's your all I to know. You know, it wasn't your typical fish picture, I guess. It wasn't. That was pretty good. Also, another thing, another fishing outfit thing. <laughs> Guys will wear their jerseys when it's not a tournament. Hate uh, that. Unless you're a pro. If you're a pro, obviously that's different. I get it. Yeah. And it, but uh, hey, it's your life. Do what you want to do. But I would always, I would ne I, I didn't even wear the jersey during the tournament. Like you it just slip it on like before the way. It's like a hockey jersey. Really? Yeah. So I know nothing about hockey. They knew nothing about fishing. We're learning from each other. Go bees. Important. Well, and that one's hooded. That one was a hood, too. That was like a jacket. A yeah, it sort of looks like... Okay. Okay. So that was yeah, helpful, I guess, to make it look like a hockey jersey. Yeah. All right. That it? That's all my questions. I'm sure mm. I'll have more, but... Yeah. Maybe she can... We'll do a Zoom call later. Ooh, if she thinks that's of not lots a bad idea. Mm -hmm. So you can... Do you want to plug your Instagram? Yes. Cool. You might... So I'm thinking if you got 10%, of the listeners follow you might get a new follow out of this great so yeah you can follow me it's pretty much very basic at maggie leo um pretty much the only maggie leo on this earth i would think yeah um so sam's gonna plug that in on his youtube Boom. page um single ready to mingle sure if you have <laughs> okay. a fish in your profile probably swipe right so there you hey, go hey that's true yeah there you go all right most of these people will or a dead deer Oh no, no Bambi's on the shelf for me. I'm, I'm all never mind. Now. But thanks, Mags. Sure. All right. Bye, guys. I'm gonna get in the big chair now. Okay. Only because it looks See comfortable. You. All right. Cool. Well, that was successful. We got like 30 minutes out of that. Yeah. Sweet. Thank you. Once we figured out our browser problem. Okay. So the rest of it, I'll just recap Alaska real quick. Um, the rest of the trip, and then talk about trail camera. Um, thank you, Maggie, for doing that because that was awesome. Obviously, I love having different people on here because it's a lot more interesting. Maggie's cool. She played college hockey for four years. She's a stud athlete. We played golf uh, with her dad her and her grandfather earlier this week. Hadn't played all year. Shot like a 45 on the front. Absolutely just like can crush the ball. It was crazy. All right. So the rest of Alaska, we were on our way to the raft trip during the last podcast, and the raft trip was unbelievably fun. We stayed in Talkeetna, which was probably my favorite town, my favorite place that I was at the entire time in Alaska. Uh, just such a cool town. Uh, campsite, we were at the Talkeetna Inn. Shout out to Billy at the Talkeetna Inn. He was the owner of the hotel and the, the little bar that was right across from it. That's where we hung out July 3rd night and rain, uh, rang in July 4th. Uh, lots of fireworks. And this is this probably sounds bad or sounds weird, but I didn't know how big of an idea or how big of a deal July 4th was going to be up in Alaska because I'm like, you're so far removed from the rest of the country. Like, do you have the same? Like, I wonder if it's going to be the same as far as everybody fired up because it's July 4th. If you, you know, you're the most, you're one of the most recent states and you're so far away from everybody else, is it really that big a deal? Yes, because every nobody's from Alaska. I think out of the 13 people that went on a rafting trip, there was one person who was an Alaskan native who was born and raised in Anchorage. Everybody else is from the lower 48. They just move up there, find out it's the coolest place on earth, and then they never come home. So they bring all of that with them. And I'm sure people in Alaska love July 4th anyways, and that was just a bad stereotype I had. But So we do the whole firework bonfire thing in Talkeetna, wake up, Take the train 40 miles north, get off at the the Gold, I don't know. It was on the Susitna River. They called our stop Gold Creek, but pretty much you rolled up, you dumped all of your cargo off on the side of the tracks. You're in the middle of nowhere, it, it feels like. Carry all your stuff down to the river, blow your boats up, 
and then you take off. And we floated for two days, had the coolest campsite. It's the perfect spot that they picked out. Uh, I had a little bit of trouble rafting. I was in charge of our raft because my friend was sick and the other two people in our boat, um, they hadn't rafted either as far as actually paddling the boat. And my oars, so if you stick the oars in the water, you lock them into place in the little oar holders, I don't know what they're called. This is all new to me. And somebody had screwed the oars in completely opposite of what they're supposed to be. So you stick them in the water and you're paddling water like this. So I get sucked around this little island and everybody's like, this is not gonna be, like, he's not gonna be able to paddle this boat. I'm like, I really think this is wrong. So we got the oars figured out and it was cool. We didn't see any moose or any bear on the float, which I was hoping to see, but every time you got off the boat, there were moose tracks everywhere. So they're all over the place out there. We just didn't see them. But the moose were really cool. I couldn't get over the, the, the three things I couldn't get over in Alaska was the fact that it never got dark. It would be three, you'd wake up, it's three o'clock in the morning and it looks like it's seven o'clock at night. I mean, it wasn't broad daylight all day. The sun would actually set for maybe an hour or two but it was, I mean, it was like sunset, like twilight, which was so cool. And it just stayed that way. I mean, it was literally, here's a mountain, and the sun just goes, doop, doop, about an hour later. It was bizarre. But rafting trip was awesome. Get back to Talkeetna. Um, then the rest of the trip was kind of just hanging out at, at uh, Grant's apartment in Anchorage. But one other really cool thing we got to do, well, we got to go through Hatcher Pass, which was a gorgeous, gorgeous place, um, which a lot of those, the people that I met up there on that rafting trip are at Hatcher Pass right now, staying in this really remote cabin you have to hike to, and it's really neat. Anyways, uh, stayed in Anchorage. The one really cool thing we got to do is go to Knight's Taxidermy. Uh, Russell Knight, he's actually had a show on, it was either Nat Geo History or Discovery Channel. Uh, I think it was called Mounted in Alaska. And so it was a, a show on taxidermy in Alaska, and it was based out of his shop. It was the coolest taxidermy shop, coolest operation you could ever imagine. Um, so there's a few pictures from that on the Fence Forest Instagram page, and the rafting trip, there's a whole new rafting trip video up on the tube on, on the YouTube channel. So um, the rafting trip video is up. I just put up the striper fishing video this morning, um, if you're listening to this on the day. The striper video is up. Um, took two trips when we were up here, and I'll get into more later. We took one trip out on the boat, caught a lot of like 18 to 24 inch inch fish uh, and then took a trip off the bank later that I didn't get the video because of where we were where we caught absolute stud giants like 44 47 inch fish so that was really really cool there'll be plenty of pictures uh, about that in the near future uh, but the one other thing I'll just do this real quick I'm making the video today another trail camera check check in for the summer I mean, it'll be the second video checking the cameras but Started to get fawns, finally getting pictures of fawns and getting pictures of, of bucks, starting to take kind of inventory. We've got a really cool looking nine pointer um, that showed up on one of the cameras and I'm just as excited about the goofy looking deer. There's one buck who is totally messed up antler wise. His left side is really big, pretty main, it would be a mainframe A. He's got four points on the left side and the right side essentially Looks like it's just a little slingshot nub that only sticks up maybe seven or eight inches. Um, and it just forms like a Y. I think I'll have to look at it closer. I haven't looked at them super close. But there's really only two different areas that we're getting. No, nah, there's three. Three different places we're getting some buck pictures in right now. So I'm probably going to move some of the cameras around uh, when we go back August 1st. I'll probably go back August 1st with Lance, my uncle. Um, and try to move those cameras that we're not getting good buck pictures on and move them for the month of August. Because uh, they should they should be, you know, they're not going to move around a ton. So if they've been there for a month and a half and I'm not getting buck pictures, they need to go somewhere else. But it, it's, it's fun to start getting buck pictures and to see how the places where we didn't get buck pictures last year during the summer, still not getting buck pictures there so far. And vice versa, where we did get buck pictures last summer, getting them again except there's one area where for the entire summer we never got any buck pictures at all and that's where the two nicest deer showed up so far this year so see if that's a fluke or if, or if they've been there a little bit more consistently so so that'll be fun to get back I'm I don't know I I feel like I'm totally geared mentally more towards deer season 
and that's okay because about, well actually the weekend before bow season starts I'll have um, the next tournament down in Chickamauga it's going to be the middle of September um, and, and that should be a lot of fun and that's going to be pretty much the only place that I'm fishing from the time I get home to the middle of September because uh, that's the only place I've got a tournament coming up at so Chickamauga middle of September should be really really fun and then the James River in October are the tournaments coming up and yeah I think that's about it uh, shout out to the YouTube subscribers. We had five new people subscribe this week, which is a that's, that's a lot for me. Uh, so check out the YouTube page if you haven't. Thanks for listening to the podcast and the videos. I've got I've just realized I've spent the whole time looking at the computer and not the camera. So I'm going to make a note of that and try to look at the camera next time. So, anyways, yeah. Let me run through. Actually, let me pull this up. Let me check my script and make sure that I haven't. Forgotten anything to mention? Okay, I guess not because I don't have anything in any of the notes at all. Oh, I wrote it down in a notebook, an actual journal. Never mind. All right, thanks for listening to the podcast. Next time you hear from me, we'll be talking about striper fishing. Literally the biggest fresh, no, not freshwater, saltwater. The biggest striper I've ever caught in my life by far. It's like 45 pounds. That's on my own personal Instagram page. I'll put it on the Fence Force page here shortly. Have a phenomenal day. God bless you. Thanks for listening. I hope that everybody's in as good of a mood as I am right now because life is wonderful when you're in a good mood. Have a wonderful day.